Ladies and gentlemen, Salah Mike, follow me on Instagram, Salah Mike with two Ks. We're answering all your questiones, ask me anything. Haven't done this in a while, so I'm excited to chat with you. Ladies and gentlemen, starting at the top here. What are your all-time goals for the bench squat and deadlift that you like to surpass someday? Uh, I don't really set like lifetime goals. I set um, kind of monthly, uh, and those aren't always numbers. That's just what I want to do this month, uh, workout-wise, um, and then maybe like a six month and a year. So I, I don't know what bench squat dead I want to hit in the next 10 years. I have no idea where I'll be. I don't know where I'll be mentally. I don't know where I'll be physically. Um, so I, I kind of go just year by year. Within this next year, I have some numbers. Uh, I'm going to keep those to myself and hopefully just let them speak for themselves on the platform. But um, the main goal is just always progress. I always want to just get better. And so maybe that's sometimes taking away from my, my top numbers and getting better in terms of my body composition or my cardiovascular health or different habits or business or YouTube. Um, but just progress is what I'm searching for all those. What was your first impression of Just Kidding Films? Um, I don't know. I, I did meet Bart Kwan uh, and Miss Gio Antoinette um, Kwan on, uh, through fitness. So I knew that they did comedy, but I didn't really know what it was. And then I think one time uh, when I was staying at their old, old house about two houses ago, uh, we just sat up and uh, watched a bunch of Bart's old videos. Um, and they're so ridiculous that they're so funny. Uh, but I wasn't really aware of them beforehand. And by that point, we were already really good friends. So um, I don't know, it was probably like three years ago. So I don't know the first, first impressions. Close grip bench or weighted dips for a stronger bench? Um, you know, obviously it's always in perspective of everything. Um, but if you just give me those options, I'm gonna go with the close grip bench. Uh, when we're picking exercise variations or things we wanna get better at, um, or things we want to do to get better at a, a, a certain lift, we wanna look at a couple factors. Um, one, how, how closely um, specific is it? How, how much does it mimic the exact exercise? And so um, if I want bigger biceps, I probably shouldn't go and run a mile. Uh, those are just too far apart. Um, not saying a dip, it's obviously an extension as well, but uh, doing the close grip very closely mimics the bench. Uh, it does um, isolate, or not isolate, but um, it does put some extra stimulus onto the tricep, so uh, that can always help build strength. It does have a longer range of motion than if a wider grip bench, so that's also uh, a great thing. If you have to move away through a longer range of motion, it's gonna be more difficult, so you can get stronger. Uh, so if I had to choose close grip bench is one of my favorite uh, accessories for the bench press. Dips, I just find uh, for myself and many people that it causes uh, unnecessary stress and can hurt um, shoulders or elbows. So, um, and it doesn't closely, that closely mimic. It's a great exercise for general strength um, and building some muscle, but. Programming aside, my squats and deadlifts have always been able to go up. Bench is forever stagnant. Supplement more variations for bench or add more days. Um, why do you say some programming aside? <laughs> you think your programming is fucking perfect, buddy? Uh, first thing I would say is probably your technique or your programming. Uh, and then behind that, it would probably be nutrition. And we are talking about different exercise variations. Uh, you know, going back to the dips and the close grip bench, it's not like if you've all of a sudden added in weighted uh, dips and close grip bench that now you're gonna go and hit a 50 pound bench PR. It doesn't work that way. Um, there's obviously something wrong, big picture. So sleep, nutrition, eating enough, eating in a slight calorie surplus, eating more than your body needs, helps you recover, will help you uh, gain more muscle obviously, but also lift more weight. Um, but I think programming is a huge thing. Uh, changing your frequency can help. So if you're only benching once a week, um, I don't know why you say programming aside, you're really pissing me off. Uh, programming is like if we're trying to go um, drive from here, Northern California down to Southern California, and we don't have a map, we just say, bring me to LA. It doesn't work that way. If you just want to hit a bench PR, but you have no plan, no progression to get there, chances are you're not going to get there. Maybe what he means is that He's tried a bunch of different programs. Yeah, you tried a bunch of programs that fucking suck, so maybe you should go to kaisantraining.com and get your shit right, bro. That's what I'm fucking telling you. Nutrition, make sure you're eating enough. Focus on your technique. Every training session you guys do, you should be focusing on one to two things per lift that you want to get better at, not just sets, reps, weight, but actual in technique. Every day, I still come in with something that I want to do better at in my technique. Hashtag stuck. Best way to overcome a deadlift plateau. We're gonna make this its own video. I'm drinking that high quality H2O.
So we're talking about plateaus, we're talking about the deadlift plateau. Um, I think with deadlifts in particular, the most common reason that people aren't progressing in the deadlift is that you're lifting too damn heavy too much. People go in and it's a great release, it's a sexual man, primal uh, exercise to lift some freaking weight off the ground, turn on Kid Rock or Limp Biscuit, turn your hat backwards and freak the fuck out and pull up 500 pounds. But if we're talking about powerlifting, we're talking about progress, we're talking about plateaus, you might have to come at this exercise a little more strategic. So um, what I find most common is that people are trying to squat the weight up. When you're trying to squat the weight up, you're bending your chest forward towards the bar instead of pushing your hips back when you set up. And that, uh, what often happens is you're using a lot of quad, which is fine, um, but then your back will round because the majority of the load is in your low back. You heard it, load on your low back, and then you're gonna try to yank on it and your hips are gonna shoot up. You're gonna get a curled uh, dog shit on the lawn deal, pelvis rotated forward, and then you're gonna have trouble locking it out rather than getting tension in your hamstrings by pushing your hips back to get to the bar rather than bending uh, your chest forward, as I mentioned, uh, as well as overall progression. Again, if you're lifting too heavy too often, we need to take a step backwards um, and start focusing on quality reps. You can go a whole workout, not grind a rep, not freak out, stay mentally calm and still progress week to week, month to month in the deadlift, bench and squat. So, um, you know, I obviously have a bunch of programs available if you guys wanna check those out. Some are free. We have a repeatable one that's free right now. It's four weeks and it's some maximal training. So it allows you to really focus on that technique while still getting good quality volume work in. Uh, by training some maximal, you're not going too heavy building bad habits in that shitty form, we're dealing in a perfect range of load, um, of, of intensity that we can perfect our form while getting more and more volume, accumulating more volume over time, which is the lead, pre the lead stimulus for hypertrophy and strength. So if we're kind of hitting all these birds with one stone, bop, 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 technique, not overtraining, uh, lifting too heavy, and uh, uh, getting volume to get stronger, I think you'll progress a little bit more. Um, frequency often between one and two times a week. Uh, again, the majority of the training I think should be between 55 and 75%. Uh, the majority of the training should be fa fairly specific. So, um, you know, a deadlift, a deficit deadlift, a pause deadlift, uh, stiff legs a great accessory. As over a long period of time, training your back, training your grip uh, will help in the long run. You want to skyrocket your bench, huh, buddy? A good accessory for the bench. Been doing close grips, you've been doing incline dumbbell, but you want something to make it skyrocket. Well, one, uh, there's no just magic pill, magic exercise that will skyrocket the bench, but what I do suggest, um, if you're looking for a new variation, um, I'm a big fan of a tempo bench. So take your competition grip, uh, take a load maybe around 60 to 70%, uh, sets anywhere from three to eight, and you're gonna lower the, the weight for three to five seconds, pause for about a second and press it back up three to five seconds. This is gonna uh, force you to find a really good bar path, what's strongest for you. Uh, it's obviously gonna have a lot of time under tension. It's gonna be very fatiguing uh, and it'll get you a lot of work, a lot of muscular damage um, without going too heavy. So something that you might have to do sets of five with at 80%, now we can handle a lesser load, lesser overall systematic stress. I don't think that makes sense. Google it, bitches. Um, but that's a really good accessory. Yeah, uh, close grip again is one of my other favorites. What do you do if you have a food craving and you're trying to eat as clean as you can? Um, so that's why I kind of follow flexible dieting. Uh, I track my food. So I have a certain amount of protein uh, and then a certain amount of calories I'm trying to hit every single day. And I track my food in an app that's called Evolve. It's just a super simple way to um, choose the food and the amount you eat every single day or every single meal. And through this, uh, you can sneak in some snacks here and there. You can get some food. Um, you know, you can have some frozen yogurt, not cheat or get off your diet. Uh, it's more about moderation. It's more about consistency in the long term than the day to day meal um, or the choices that you make. So that's where the flexibility comes in. The flexibility is in a little bit of timing, a little bit of um, food choices. I do try to get a bunch of veggies in, a bunch of fruits in, a bunch of quality uh, proteins in, uh, but as well, if I need to, or if I want to, if I'm having that craving, I'll go and get some Froyo and just track it uh, and picture it into the big screen. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it for this one. Be, for, be sure to follow me, Silent Michael 2 ks on Instagram, also Twitter. I got a Facebook, all the links in below if you want my programming. I appreciate you guys. Give this thing a thumbs up, share it with your friends. We're out of here until next time.